Hey everybody, this is Marianne Shiozawa, and welcome back to another episode of the You're Doing Great Mom podcast. This is episode seven, and I'm speaking with a wonderful colleague of mine, Dr. Melissa Longo. I really love who she is, and I'm so happy that we found each other. Melissa's been doing so much in her life recently, including her own two podcasts, running her own chiropractic practice in Ontario, being a wife and a mother of two boys. She's rocking it. Our profession, chiropractic, is a fairly close-knit community, and Melissa, who's putting herself out there in social media, running her own podcast, as well as being a guest on several different podcasts, it's no surprise that I've heard about her before. So when I first connected with her, it was when I heard her on Dr. Ed Osborne's podcast, The Chiropractic Philanthropist. She's super inspiring, and I immediately reached out to connect with her. Shortly after I asked her to be on my podcast, she invited me to be on her podcast called Rockstar Doctor Moms. We've had a ton of fun getting to know each other, and I'm so glad that I have another great chiro mom friend in my life now. In this episode, we talk less about chiropractic and more about her experience as a mom, raising her sons, her transition as a single mother, and how she's been able to make her life extraordinary, being clear with what she loves and wants in her life, and how she's achieved many levels of success for herself. I hope you enjoy this inspiring episode. Stay tuned at the end to hear how you can reach out to Dr. Melissa. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, It's it's been a great day. It's been, uh, yeah, I'm, it's it's interesting that we're doing this show today because last night I was really feeling great about my boys and, you know, feeling really successful in what I've accomplished with them. Oh, that's great. uh, It's not, you don't always have days. I know. (laughs) I was just going to say, we don't always feel like that, right? No, I think a lot of days we question ourselves, but I think that, um, yeah, just observing the just the, the space that my kids are both in right now. They're both seeming happy and engaged and um, connected, you know. And so it's when, when your kids are happy, we're always happy as moms, right? Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's really what it's all about. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right? And we can perceive the subtlest changes, right? I mean, if you know your child just doesn't seem themselves, they might not want to talk about it or they might not want to give any indication because they want to take care of things themselves or they don't really know what their emotions are yet. But yeah. moms, we always know. We always know when our child is not 100%. <laughs> That's so true. I tell that to my kids too. You know, it's just like I'll say something or I'll notice something and then they'll be like, especially my um, 11-year-old daughter, she's like, how did you know? And I'm like, listen, I know everything about you. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to sound creepy, but like, you know, it's like, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's that connection that we have, I think innately from the beginning. I mean, uh, these little people grow inside us and that connection that we have with them right from conception through to the pregnancy, through, you know, breastfeeding and all that, that that really, for me, it was a lot of closeness, you know, with the carrying them and, and, uh, you know, co-sleeping and nursing them and, you know, those kind of relationships and that connection keeps going if you, when you start it that way. So, um, I think it's, uh, yeah, we know, we always know because we have a more of a bond. It's no different than a bond with anyone else. I don't think, you know, you're a bond with your partner, with a close friend, with a family member. It's, um, time and connection is what builds a relationship. Yeah. 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 It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm so, so, happy that you're on this um, podcast, on my podcast, because, you know, we just connected on online, on Facebook. And I love that community that we were able to um, connect with together. And, um, you know, it's actually, I heard you from another podcast, um, Dr. Ed Osborne. And, um, and I was just like, I have to connect with this, with this other. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> and hearing what you were doing or what you're doing with your podcast and inspiring other chiropractors, uh, chiropractor moms, it it was just, it, it hit me really just right there in the core. And I was just like, oh, I just so want to just 
I don't know. It was just great when you um, reached out. You know, you were like, "Oh yeah, I'll." I'll you could kind of volunteered when I when I um, asked who wants to be on my podcast, and when you volunteered, I was like, "Cool, this is so cool." <laughs> well, I really so. enjoyed it. I mean, it's fun for me being on the other the other um, end of the conversation, right? I'm used to doing a lot of the interviewing, and so I really enjoy it when I get asked the questions and. Um, you know, I mean, just humbly, whatever, if I can eat, say something that helps one more person, I mean, that's kind of always how I've, I've tried to live my life within the practice with other women. I mean, we're moms, so we get it. I mean, so many times we have good days and tough days. And if someone out there is having a not so great day, you know, like your podcast title says, you know, you're probably still doing great. Yeah. And uh, if you just need another mom to give you a virtual hug or remind you, like, you know what, you're, you're doing, you're doing fine. You know, life's going to be just fine. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. That's, uh, that's really important. And I really enjoyed chatting with you last week. So I'm glad that we got to, we got to meet. Yeah, cool, cool. So why don't you just start telling me about yourself as a mother, uh, how many kids you have, how old they are. And yeah, well, we can jump in just like that. Sure. So I have, uh, I'm going to say 15 and 11 because their birthdays are happening within the next couple of weeks. So uh-huh. yeah, 15 year old teenager. He's just in his first year of high school, which was a big jump for, for all of us. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's, he's a great kid, very athletic. Um, you know, he's, he's had a few challenges with getting accustomed to the workload at high school, but he's a bright boy and a little bit of guidance. Um, he's, he's really doing great. Uh, my younger son, Ty, is 11, and, you know, they're very different personalities, um, but he's a, he's a little ray of sunshine and uh, really creative and uh, really confident and a lot of body awareness, and he's just, he's just finding his stride right now, getting involved in, in lots of sports in his own way. So, um, yeah, they're, they're great. Yeah. I think that being a parent is really an amazing, an amazing experience um, for our own personal growth as, as human beings, mm-hmm. and just the just the joy that nothing has brought me more joy in my life than than my sons you yeah. know so um yeah so that's kind of where we're at these days mm-hmm. i run a my practice uh so i'm as you said i'm a chiropractor my practice is currently in my home um i made a transition to create a live workspace for myself and my sons 5 years ago now because um, the other practice location I had, um, you know, was a different space and I had a house and I just, I realized I wanted to just really simplify a lot of things in my life and be able to be the kind of mom that I wanted to be, what, what, how I define that, you know, for my sons and Mm -hmm. myself. And, um, yeah, so I needed to make some changes and simplify. And so I, I bought a property that is in the downtown of our community. I live in Collingwood, Ontario, Canada. So it's two hours, uh, north of Toronto. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, we've got a great setup here. So my practice, I can be in the office working, and my boys are just in the the room next to me. And um, you yeah, know, that's great. They've they've adapted really well to that. So cool. They must love that. They do. Yeah. At the beginning, um, you know, because it was five years ago, so they were ten and you know ten and six. It was a bit of a tricky transition because they were used to me being very separate. So when I was home, I, my 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 attention was one hundred percent on home life, you know, whether it was being with them or, or meals or laundry or tidying up, that kind of stuff. I wasn't really focused on work. So when we first moved to this location, it was, well, why are you working all the time? Mm-hmm. Which I wasn't, my hours were actually the same, but they perceived it because now they were acutely aware of when I was working. And at that time as well, my practice was just starting all over again after I rebuilt my life after my marriage ended. So I was, you know, ready and willing to work outside a regular practice hours to try to accommodate people and, and be extra, you know, flexible. And so we just, it just took a little bit of a, a learning curve and mm-hmm. for them to appreciate and understand that being on my own and, you know, what, what, when I go to work, what does that provide for them? And, um, yeah, no, they do like it though. They, they have a lot of flexibility. So if they need to be home from school for some reason, um, yeah, it's, it's easy to accommodate. So, yeah, that's great. It's, it's so, it sounds so convenient and I, would love to be able to do that eventually, like soon as well, because it does sound pra- so practical. And to be able to create that, it's just, I think it's a great environment for your kids. I think it's for us. I mean, again, it works really well for us. I think my son's, my oldest son works for me now. So he oh, cool. is able to see, um, you know, some of the tasks involved in, in running a business and you know, we have lots of conversations, especially as they're getting older, about the things that I'm doing and the things that why that I'm doing certain things and how I love helping moms and why am I doing this. And so they, they're starting to see that when you're a business owner, and especially if you're a creative entrepreneurial type, you know, you're going to want to 
be you don't just stop producing stuff when you when you go to at home at night your brain is kind of always in that mm-hmm. mode and mm-hmm. um so yeah they're seeing lots of different things about that kind of lifestyle mm-hmm. and um that they appreciate i think the simplicity of it yeah and it's a really great message for your children and i think that as mothers we from the get go there's a lot of guilt that goes on when we when we branch out and we get to we choose to do things that are totally independent from them but um i think that there is there is a fine line but there's a good balance when you are able to live um and in, in, in an example of your success and, you know, applying all your tools and values and, and, and kids learn by behavior and re- repetition. And I think that that's such a great message um, that you're creating for them. Yeah, I, I would have to agree, especially as, as a female, you know, I want them to see that anything is possible for men and for women. Yeah. And, um, you know, their dad is a chiropractor as well. So they're also aware of the subtleties in our different business models and, um, and, and the why behind that. It, it gets more interesting as they get older, I would have to say, because we can have conversations about why, you know, I do certain things and why does he do certain things. And, um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's life. It's real life. It's, you know, we want our, my, my goal for my sons is that they become amazing human beings that contribute to the world in, in some way and that they can provide for themselves. So they need to be modeling that. We need to be modeling that and having those conversations with them. I think when, as soon as they're at the age where they can understand that. That's so powerful to say to for a mother to say, I want to raise them in a way that they grow up being an example, you know, to make a difference in the world. I think that's just I don't I don't know if everybody I mean, we want the best for our children, but to, Mm -hmm. you know, to to really be to stand in that. That's that's really powerful. (laughs) What you just said. That's really, really cool. You know, I, I mean, think that it's um when I think about and something that I work a lot with with the women that I you know I mentor and I coach with and even women in the practice it's like you know what 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 is it going to mean for you for your life to be successful, and for me you know a successful life is not just you know am I able to help people in my practice and and have a successful business I mean that's one part of what makes me feel good but raising my children I mean in every situation I think of what's brought me the most joy in my life sure there's lots of great joy that comes from being with patients and seeing their progress and watching these kids grow up really healthy but it pales in comparison to what I feel in my heart when I watch my son skate playing hockey doing something he loves you know when you know he says something funny to me like it's I I can't even compare it and so it's just a different um yeah when I define success for myself it's I want to have children who are now going to grow up and, and be healthy, contributing people to the world and are able to have relationships and are able to express themselves. And, you know, mm-hmm. if you think about all the things that create amazing human beings that we respect and admire, I think that's, um, that's something that each parent should obviously try to articulate for themselves and what values, you know, do they hold dear. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it's important for us as moms, especially to recognize that the time and energy we put into mothering is a part of our life that we can certainly look back on and say, hey, I did it. I did a good job. Mm-hmm. And not just our success is defined by, you know, what job we held or how much money we made or, you know, there's so many different metrics I think we need to measure our success by. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's really great. So um, I'm interested, You so your 15-year-old, well, you had your kids quite young, I then. did. Yeah. Well, I mean, young nowadays, I guess. I, yeah. my, son, my son teases me that I'm old. And of I, have course. To say, I have to tell someone my, my validation last night, I was stretching. We were watching a, the hockey game last night, the playoff game. And I was stretching and my son looked at me and he always teases me about being old. And uh, he's like, you know, mom, he goes, I have to say, I think you're probably in better shape than me. Uh, and I started laughing and he's like, you know, I could probably outrun you because I'm so much younger. But <laughs> and I just started laughing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm in my 40s. I had my son Max when I was 28. Um, when I was still in chiropractic school. So I, I always wanted to be a mom. I thought uh, I was concerned that I was going to have more challenges. My cycles, you know, were really irregular. And mm. when I got married... Um, my, my her husband and I at the time decided, you know what, let's let nature take its course. Uh, we're committed to each other. We're happy to get pregnant whenever it happens. I started mm-hmm. doing, uh, we got married at the end of June. I had kind of started doing some, uh, fertility support, just, you know, some Chinese herbal medicine and, and I was getting adjusted and some, just to make sure that my body was working the way it should be. And mm-hmm. wouldn't you know it, I got pregnant right away oh. <laughs> pregnant within a couple of months. And so I finished my last year at chiropractic school 
pregnant. Um, and, uh, which was, you know, it was fine. It was great. And, um, I graduated and had my son four, four days later. Oh, wow. So I started life as a business owner and, uh, and a mom all at the same time, really. Oh, wow. But, um, yeah. So how, um, yeah, as a, so as a 28 year old, I'm thinking, so, yeah. Sounds so young now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's, um, yeah, I mean, and <clears throat> you know, so you went to, uh, which chiropractic school? Uh, CMCC in Toronto. Yeah. And so you, you and your, um, your husband at the time, you guys met at school, obviously. Met in school. Yeah. He was two years uh, ahead of me in school. So oh, okay. he was working in, as an associate in another practice and then uh, doing locums as well while mm-hmm. I finished school. And we, uh, we had a home birth. It was really, uh, oh, it was really cool. a great experience for me. I mean, he, my son was born very quickly it was a little bit of a surreal experience because, you know, being first time labor, I thought, you know, 12, it's going to be 12 to 15 hours. It's mm-hmm. normal, healthy. And it was literally like three hours start to finish. And um, all of a sudden, you know, I thought I was going to have these hours and hours to like <sighs> meditate and yeah. breathe and reflect <laughs> and listen to music and really understand that I'm going to become a mother. And, you know, before you knew it, boom, he was, he was there in my arms. And, wow. um, yeah, it was did you, um, yeah, cool. did you, did you have a lot of, do you remember if you had a lot of Braxton Hicks, like in the last? I did. Yeah. yeah. And actually the day of my convocation from CMCC, I had, um, I was already, I had a midwife's appointment that morning and I was two centimeters dilated. And oh. so the big joke with all my classmates was like, oh, this is going to be great. Yeah. Melissa's going to go into labor at the <laughs> ceremony. And I'm like, yeah, that's not going to be so great for me. Like they were all <laughs> hoping that my water was going to break as I crossed the stage and something dramatic like that. But no, he held off. So I'd had a lot of contractions and my body was definitely getting ready the week before. So by the time I actually went into active labor, um, it didn't, it didn't take too long. And my, my second son, his birth was, was even quicker. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, uh, I, I was lucky in that. Yeah. I mean, they're short and intense deliveries, Yeah, but, um, but I, you know, I'll take that. Yeah. I mean, what my other, um, podcast episode was with Melissa. Um, she, her, she's actually, um, uh, also Melissa Sanford. She has six children and she was saying that one of her babies was like two and a half hours or something. And, and she was like, it was so intense. And she's like, I'll, I, I take a six hour, um, an easier six hour labor over an intense two and a half hour labor. So I'm always like curious about that, you know, like really, really quick labors, you know, it, it's like, Oh, you know, that must've been great that it was so quick, but it, yeah, sounds it like was, it was but intense. you go, you don't have that. It, it's like your body was doing all those warm up contractions, you know, in the, the weeks before. So mm. then you sort of go right into very active labor. And, um, you know, I think, nature naturally provides us with those endorphins and the feedback loops that we know happen internally for women when they start labor that gives you a break from the contractions and you kind of go into really active labor with contractions that are in longer you know right a very very quickly so and then you get to that transition point where you're like I'm out of here give mm-hmm. me some drugs I'm done <laughs> and then next thing you know you know you're ready to push and it it happens um so yeah it's intense it's short and intense but it's the only reality that I know. So, you know, I have taught prenatal classes to lots of women and they all think and hope they're going to have that experience. And, um, it's not, it's not the norm. So it's, it's hard for me to sometimes relate to longer, more, you know, more, um, difficult labors because it just wasn't my experience. Fortunately. Mm -hmm. Did you prepare like hypnobirthing or, um, I mean, you were, you were surrounded by, a lot of chiropractors. So definitely were you getting adjusted by a sp- like regularly by the same person and, um, you know, yeah, what kind of, I yeah. definitely, um, we did some prenatal classes, but you're right. I was in that bubble at that time of, of chiropractic students. You know, I had never even heard of midwives until I went into chiropractic school. And then once I started to understand what they were all about, it just made so much sense to me. And because my, my ex-husband was two years ahead of me, we you know we saw a lot of those people start to have children and, and have these really beautiful natural deliveries. And so I knew it was possible. My whole framework of what I thought labor was supposed to be radically changed, I think, when I was even just in first year at, at chiropractic college because everything changed, my whole philosophy of health. But the understanding that, you know, our bodies are designed to to give birth. It's what it's the way we were created. It's the way we, we have the power and the ability to do so. And and if something goes off course, then we have these amazing interventions that can save our lives and the baby's lives. But, you know, normal natural delivery is completely possible. And, you know, I believe it's something that women should strive for because it's such an empowering experience. 
And it's so much better if for your health and for your baby's health. So, you know, it's um, being comfortable. For me, I had to be comfortable with the what if of, you know, because we were planning a home birth and we did these great prenatal classes and um, I was getting adjusted. Yeah, I was, I was in clinic at the time. So we had a, an intern that I was seeing consistently. And um, I think I was a demo now that I think back for a lot of other people that wanted, you know, some experience with working with a pregnant woman and noticing changes in, you know, in pelvic alignment and the ligaments in the front and all that, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and I did that and I did some great, um, I was doing yoga and I just kept active and my diet was really great. I was vegetarian at the time and I did lots of herbal infusions. I didn't, I didn't do prenatal vitamins. I just, you know, made sure that I was getting the nutrients I needed from, other supplementation and um, yeah, but when I did the prenatal classes, I remember quite vividly coming to the understanding that you know I'm striving to have a natural delivery. Um, if something happens and I end up in to have a home birth in Toronto, you have to be pre-registered, you know, at, at the hospitals. And mm -hmm. um, I was pre-registered at two of them that were close close by to where I lived. Um, the midwives knew I was low risk, so you know I always like to put that out there for people because they want to make sure that a lot of people are intimidated by home birth and it's it's a really great experience for women when they're healthy and um, they have access to, to good quality health care close by if something goes wrong. I mean, no one wants to see a, a labor or delivery end with something, um, you know, with some illness or some tragedy for either party. So, you know, they want to make sure the environment is right for everyone. And um, yeah, so I had I had a great delivery. The prenatal classes, uh, what really clicked for me was understanding that I was trying to have a, a labor that was natural. And if something went off course, then in that case, the medical system wasn't intervening with my life. They were actually helping me. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a big difference between um, in intervening when it's not necessary and it can actually cause, you know, other complications and when they're actually helping you. When if things are going, you know, there's an emergency situation that kicks in, well, great that we have the ability to do a C-section. Great that we have other devices that can help the woman and the baby. But I don't think it should be the first the first line of, of thought. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. <clears throat> um, and so, uh, were you? Because you know you were students, and I'm thinking. I mean, because I remember when I was in school, um, I was a, a little younger, but there were a couple of. I remember some women that were married, and they also had um, their pregnancy during school. And what was it like? Did you feel? Was there any kind of? Um, I mean, clearly, you, it, you sounded like you were, you were, you know, you got married and you were ready for this. And mm -hmm. it sounds like because your ex husband was was at the time was working. So, um, did you did you know like you know because when you graduate, you know, I'm just thinking back with my experience. When you graduate, it's like a new. It's everything's totally new. So for you, you. You said you became you became a, a a mother, a new mother, and then a doctor, and that's mm. that sounds like crazy town. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you know, I mean, no, it just it just, I mean, I, I it's a, such a simple, and it's probably so overused the expression. It just it is what it is. I mean, it's the way that the was supposed to play out for me. Yeah, and we literally, yeah, I graduated. We had our first son. We moved, you know, we moved out of Toronto into this community that we're living in now. We bought our first house. We opened our practice. Like we did all those major life things in mm. a six month period. And we didn't know any other way, you know, so you just figure things out as you go along. And um, I don't have, I don't think we have any regrets. I mean, it was, we didn't have any support in our community. We moved to this community because we, um, it, it fit so many of our, you know, we had a checklist of things we wanted with a place we wanted to live. And this community fit a lot of them. But we didn't know anyone here, so we didn't have any any supports, um, support systems. We you know we gradually developed that, but at that point in time, you know our dream was always to build a family practice, and our dream was to practice together. You know, opposite times, and so we did that for the first while, and it was a lot of it was really exciting. It was you know the idea of what we're building, what we're gaining. And, um, I mean, my infant son, he was, he was, you know, before they started talking and walking, I mean, you can take them everywhere, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, especially with me cause I was nursing, you know, so he would come with us, we'd be painting the office and we would tag team and, you know, I'd go nurse and take the little one home. And then, you know, we would just, we just share the responsibilities equally. And, um, yeah, I just, you just kind of roll through all those experiences as they present themselves, I mm -hmm. guess. There wasn't any other way. So we were, we were, we were prepared in that. I think once you become pregnant, you know, you've got 10 months really to kind of figure out what's going to happen next. And yeah. the timing of it was actually fine for us because we were planning on, I was graduating anyway. 
And the plan was to move on. So we had already, before even, you know, became pregnant, we had already been planning, well, what's going to happen when I graduate? Where are we going to go live? What are we going to do? So some of those things had already been, you know, coming together and adding a little person to the mix was just, um, yeah. you know, it was just, unexpected. now having said that, he, I had to write my board exams at when he was six weeks old and uh, the first six weeks of my son Max's life were certainly an eye-opening experience for me as a mother. I mean, he didn't, he didn't nurse very well the first few days, so we had to, you know, really work really hard on that. And, you know, of course, you're not getting any sleep, and you're, you know, accustomed to now this whole little person who needs you 24 hours a day. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it was. And then I was trying to study and for my my licensing exams, and uh, so that was probably not my most favorite time. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it was just, it was stressful. You know, That's... there was, and I know that me having those stress hormones, or I'm sure he was. My son was picking it up, and. But you get through it, right? And yeah, and yeah. I look back now and think, Phew, I'm so glad I passed <laughs> that round of exams and it good for it you. worked out. But um I think wow, none of us, you you're, know. You're um that is really amazing. Uh I mean, because you know, as a as a first time mom and learning how to breastfeed and so you studied? I mean, and I hear that Canadian boards are like brutal. Yeah, they, I mean, I was lucky in that that was the first year they allowed us to write our first set of the national licensing exams. We wrote them in the fall. So I was actually in my first trimester. So I was able to, and I wasn't really that, I was a little queasy at times, but I was tired. And so, you know, I was able to study and rest and I had time. And actually, we had a group of five of us that were pregnant. And so we were all on the same page as far as we're going to study during these hours and we'll get together. And that was a great, um, great bond that we all formed. So then when I had to write my the provincial licensing exams or what I wrote in June, and those were the more practical hands-on ones. And um, yeah, you know, somehow I, I had this, uh, you know, you had this illusion that this baby's going to sleep, sleep and smile and breastfeed and poop, right? That's yeah. what I thought. And I remember feeling so mad at some of my girlfriends <laughs> at two weeks postpartum. I'm like, why did no one tell me this kid, like a baby, they, they cry a lot, right? <laughs> they cry when they need you, when they're hungry, when they're tired, like for everything. And um, yeah, it was, it was a big adjustment, you know, for sure. And I remember thinking, why does someone tell you this part? I mean, you go, I'd go to visit my friends that had new babies and you see them when they're sleeping or they're, oh, they're so cute. And yeah. then you're only, see, you're only seeing them for an hour of their whole day. And, um, I mean, all babies are different. And, uh, but I remember feeling like, well, this is, yeah, it wasn't all roses. That's for sure. But <laughs> you, you get through it, right? Like anything in life where you, I think if you have the attitude that you can and you're just going to keep going one step at a time, I mean, that's sort of what's carried me a lot of in the different situations I've had in my life. Just keep yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's um, it's really inspiring because I think that um, just lots of women go through these difficulties where there's not as much clarity. Because it sounds like you you had a lot of clarity, you know. And I think that that that's there's something to be said about that in terms of creating what you see for yourself and. Um, that I hear that in you a lot. And, um, and you know, of course it's not all roses and, you know, you in the moment you get through it <clears throat> and you figure it out. Um, but I think that a lot of the women that I meet and talk to, it's, you know, it's not, the, the clarity is not as much there. I mean, I think that, I don't know, um, the reality of it, you know, and it's very scary and, um, yeah, you know, it's I guess I, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, what what was it for you that gave you that strength and that clarity and that that um you know, when when things got really tough for you or, you know, <clears throat> when you were you know, really emotional and you just, you know, if you had that difficulty breastfeeding in the beginning or what was it that, you know, pulled you to up and to to keep you going? I think that um, I certainly, I, I had the benefit of my, my ex-husband is, you know, just as strong of an advocate for natural health as I am and uh, very passionate about it as well. So having his support, um, was, was, you know, invaluable during those times. Um, I don't know. I think we all have, and I appreciate what you're saying. Not a lot of women that I even experience, the women that I work with really not always know what they want, you know, and I, but I think we all do. I think it's inside us. It's in that inner voice, that instinct, 
that is in us from the moment, you know, we arrive on this planet and, mm-hmm. and life experiences tend to numb it down, right? And, and we start to think more and it's that educated thinking in the way our brain works, you know, the, our educated thought is always like, oh, we should do this, we should do this. When if we really get quiet and there's lots of different ways to do this, and, you know, you, your body will, your instincts will tell you what you need to do. And the challenge, I think, for many women and men is we know what that voice is and we hear it, but we, we just want to push it away because maybe we don't like what it's telling us. Mm-hmm. Maybe we don't like, you know, it's telling us to, you know, change our, our job or relocate or give up a project we're working on with work or something. And we don't want to necessarily do that because we have other attachments to it. So I think that we always have that inner wisdom. And I think for me, fortunately, as a chiropractor, um, I was surrounded by a lot of powerful um I I mean, personally powerful people in that I had a lot of role models and mentors who really helped me understand, you know, true chiropractic philosophy is that health comes from the inside out, right? From from above down, from your brain down, your spinal cord. But that also goes deeper in that the guidance that we need from the world, you know, about our existence is also being put into us. And whatever your religious faith is, however you interpret that is individual. But I kind of felt like I knew, like, you know, I'm here for a reason. Um, I had enough experiences that that validated paths that I w- that I was on. You know, that I knew that I would get through things. I knew that if I was tapped into that sort of inner voice, and if I listen to it and follow it, and you know, now thinking about it, the more I've done that and had to make some very difficult decisions in my life, it's always been the right way. Yeah, not always the easiest way, but it's always been the right way. So. I think that I hope I answered your question. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I rambled there a little bit, but I don't know. I mean, we're all we're all different as human beings, and for some people, you know, they'll look at what one person would accomplish and think, "Wow, how could they do that?" And then for that person themselves, they're just being themselves. Mm-hmm. So I think it just I know what I'm capable of. I know my speed. I know what my energy level that I generally operate on. I, I know what drives me. I know what excites me, and I think that has only grown for me as a as a woman the older that I get and just because of the wisdom and the experience that, that you, you get. Yeah. 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 I think that you're, you're absolutely right. I, I love what you said where we, we all know what we want. There is, it's inside us. And I do, I do understand what you mean where there's a lot of people, a lot of women that just don't, they say that they, or they think they don't know what they want. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I also tell them it's, I, it's there. You do know what you want, but there's like something in the way, something stopping them. There's, there's some kind of block, you know, there is a reason that they can't access that. But I think that that's, um, that's a huge tool to, to have. And, um, you know, well, and I think you asked those same questions of yourself, right? With, with getting ready, um, you know, when you first left practice and then getting ready to get back into it. I mean, I think you've been really clear with what makes me happy what 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 drives me and where am I at right now? And I think if, if we're moms, and, and like I said at the beginning, if you're going to define your success in life, which is what I do, but my kind of kids I raise, then I know what raising good humans requires, mm-hmm. right? We all know what, what they need. They need love and attention. They need good food. You know, they need to be adjusted. They need to be active and play. They need rest time, you know? So I want to give my children all those things. And I've had to, you know, tailor my life at some stages and give up certain things so that I could I could provide for them, um, and that's a great thing to be able to question ourselves every stage of of our lives of where am I at now? What do I want to do? Because I think, like you said, our the answers are within us. Mm-hmm. We just don't always like you know we don't like what the answers are going to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes you know, you know, like there's that little inner voice, and you're not liking what what that little inner voice is saying, but you know that that's that's coming from like a deep instinct, a gut feeling and that's the right thing the, the right path but it's yeah. not always comfortable <clears throat> no you know it, it, it you know it's like what they say growth you know? growth, growth if growth isn't right i mean exactly most, yeah yeah and as mothers we have a lot of different voices especially when you are running a practice and you know like you've, we've got our two hats or well, more than two hats actually. <laughs> yeah. 20, 2,500. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's never, it's, it's, it's never, um, it never stops, you know, it's just ongoing and to it, it's, and it's a skill to, I think to, to develop that, you know, and to, to stay on, on in the game and stay on top of things and staying focused. Um, I mean, of course, 
you know, as any human being, there's going to be some, some slips and sometimes when you just want to be lazy and you just don't want to do it. And, you know, someone, you want somebody to hold, hold your hand and, you know, that sort of thing. So, yeah, but I'm a really big believer in, and I stress this and, and sometimes I, I get, um, not some flack for it, but you know, moms need to take care of themselves. And it's, I, I don't believe in the whole moms are, you know, m- martyrs. Like it's definitely, okay, there's some situations when our your children need dinner, it's not the time to go pour, you know, have a bath. But, <laughs> you know, you need to be, you need to be refueling yourself in whatever way that that can be. And, it, you know, when your children are young, sometimes it's, you know, a cup of tea by yourself when they finally go to bed. Or, you know, it's in the middle of the day for 15 minutes, or it's while you're waiting at the hockey rink, like you've got to fit in times for yourself to do something that fills your soul as a woman and as a human being, mm-hmm. wherever you can. Because if everyone is, you know, that, that analogy of the bucket, if your bucket is empty and you've got, not, like, you can't give to anyone, you can't give to your business if you're working, you can't give to your partner, you can't give to your girlfriends, your family members, your children. So I'm a huge advocate, like, women need to take care of themselves physically, uh, emotionally, socially, so that we can continue to give what we need to give to everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an act of self love. Someone told it to me a long time ago and I thought that's a brilliant way to look at it. It's not selfish. Mm-hmm. It's actually an act of self love to be making sure that you're giving yourself what you need. Yeah. And I think that, that, I mean, that's crucial. That's critical. It's essential. And I, I don't at all believe I'm, I'm not, I'm in the, I'm in your camp <laughs> and I right. do, I do know what you mean. Like there's some people that, are, you know, you get some flack for that, you know, and, and I don't, I just don't understand why that is. Um, I really do believe that, that it's just like, kind of like what they say on the plane, you know, you got to put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on your kids. Um, I mean, that's just a simple way of, uh, saying it, but <clears throat> it's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's really essential. And, um, you know, I see a lot of mothers that it just looks like they're on the hamster wheel and they just can't get escape. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's almost like, absolutely, yeah. And it's like, when do you get to do something just for yourself? Just something that you want to do that, that gives you joy, you right. know? And, um, and then like that, <clears throat> what I, what, uh, the martyr thing kind of comes out a little bit, you know, and it's just like, mm-hmm. no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> and, um, and that's, it. it's, I see that a lot, you know, and, and I don't know if it's, um, I guess, I don't know if it's, it's a British thing or, but I do see it no, in America. I think it's, I think and- <laughs> it's universal. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, no, I think it's universal. And I think that, um, the more times that women speak up, I mean, certainly every woman that I've interviewed on my podcast on both of them has advocated the same thing. You know, how do you take time for yourself or what do you need? And for some women, they need their, you know, their weekly manicures or they need their workouts or they need both, or they just have rituals that they've created for themselves. Some women, it's just, they get up an extra hour in the morning and, you know, they might not be morning women, or, you know, but they, they're knowing that that time of the day is when they're going to be able to carve it out for themselves and it grounds them for the whole day. So I think we can all find something that works at whatever age and stage your children are, are in, right? And that's as a parent of, of boys who are older now, you know, those early days, um, you know, they, they pass and then you get into different stages as your kids get older and their needs change and you get time back in, uh, in, in different ways. You know, my, my sons do go to public school, so they're there for six hours of the day and I have some time there where I can run errands if I need to, you know, I'm in the practice a lot, but you can find the time, but you just have to, you have to book that time for yourself. The same way you have to book in dates with your partner or, you know, with your kids, like you have to book in time for yourself and accept that it's going to be whatever it's going to be some weeks. And some weeks it might only be, like I said, a glass of wine or a cup of tea you know, at 10 o'clock at night, but it's at least something. And if you're honoring it and, and, and knowing that that's your choice that you're making for yourself, it's a good start. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we, we all need that. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And it gets, it gets easier as time goes on. And, you know, the only other thing I would say is my kids have gone older that, you know, the relationship, you can then communicate things. You can say, mommy needs some time right now. You yeah. know what? You've, you've had time with your friends after school. Look, I'm going to go out tonight for dinner with my friends you know, and they can understand. And again, like we talked about earlier, it's modeling what do healthy humans need? We need social connections. We need support. We need fun. We need play. 
And so making sure that your children understand that is, I think, perfectly healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. Really good advice. And um, so you are you have two boys and, (laughs) and, you know, girls and boys are very different from each other. I mean, we know that. Yeah. And so is there like, you know, it sounds like you're very close to them and that's really, really great because I think that raising boys and raising girls, there's different communications. There's different um, effective ways to, to, uh, to raise them, I think. And um, is there any, like, what have you learned, you know, in having in having two boys? And, you know, it sounds like they're very active. I mean, you know, you said that, they're, of course, they're very different from each other. Um, has it been uh, challenging or has it been quite natural and easy for you? I'm learning a lot about um, about male psychology, to be honest. Um, you know, it's it's entertaining. I, I felt actually innately, Marianne, that I was going to have boys. I just, oh. um, yeah, I just, I've got a lot of strong men around me and great friends. And I've always been really comfortable with, with friends who are male and female. I don't know. I just had the sense that I, I, that's, that that's what I was going to be given. Um, so I don't, I don't know any other way. There are, um, from what I observe and from what I hear from my girlfriends, yeah, they're not, there's not as much drama. They're very simple. <laughs> um, I, it makes me laugh now because my son is almost 15. I mean, he, his attitude towards girls is really non-existent. He's just like, he can't be bothered because he wants to um, play sports and focus on school and have time with his buddies. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting to me because I think, geez, when I was 15, like I wanted a boyfriend and I know how the girls are behaving. You know, we've had some mm-hmm. incidences and I observed the girls around him and it's not like there's not any interest on the, in the other way, but he's, he's just like, I just want to do my own thing. And I think that's, that's, that's a lot of men are like that, right? Yeah. Like in relationships. So, um, no, I don't know. There haven't been any, the, the challenges that they've faced um, in their life would certainly be that their parents divorced. And, um, I think that one of our greatest accomplishments in that process was being able to co-parent effectively. Mm. And, um, you know, it does make me quite proud when people in our community, um, comment on it, like, wow, you, you guys have really made it work and really, you know, I'm now remarried and, and Mike's husband's remarried and there's, you know, there's definitely been some challenges along the way eight years, you know, later, mm-hmm. um, and the whole process, but you know, any relationship, any co-parenting relationship is the same as, you know, any other relationship. It takes effort. It takes work. It takes communication. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's not always easy for them, but, um, the big picture is that they're very loved mm-hmm. and their needs are always met. And their dad and I have always been able to, you know, communicate without them around. And that was what was always a huge priority, um, for, for both of us is to not let them see, you know, any disagreements or, I mean, it's just, it's not, for us, it wasn't necessary. So if, even now, if we're going to have a disagreement about how we would deal with a certain issue, you know, we'll, we'll call each other on the phone or we'll get together for, a, you know, for a meeting and, and try to work things out. So we try to keep those relationships, um, you know, really respectful and, and the kids know, like we're different people, you know, so even if we were still married, we would be likely responding to situations differently, like most moms and dads do. But um, I don't know if I've, you know, they're, we're very close, I think, also because of that. Mm. You know, when they were three and seven, when my marriage ended, and I was single mom, right? I was a single mom for, and I still am, I'm remarried now, but my husband works, uh, he's based in Toronto, so like I said, I'm two hours away. Oh, wow. So when we got married, and he's, he has two adult children, you know, he's 10 years older than I am, mm-hmm. so his, his kids are twins, they're 26, and, and they add an amazing you know, other dimension to our lives and they're mm-hmm. amazing people. So we're, we, when we got married, we both knew like, this is what our kids both need. And he's, uh, he's here as much as he can be. And I'm in Toronto as much as I can be, but I have a lot of time throughout the week with just the boys and I still, and they really, really love that. They love that they get me all to themselves and that, um, you know, he's there for them as a, as another adult who cares about them, but he never intervenes in their life. He doesn't discipline them. He doesn't really get involved. And I think that's been another huge key for mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Um, and that understanding, you know, if their step parents are going to come into kids' lives, you know, it needs to work for each family. But what's worked really well for us is that he is just another, you know, adult who cares. 
he doesn't try to overstep, um, you know, their dad's role and he doesn't, um, he doesn't try to get involved unless he's asked. Mm -hmm. And that's really been a, a big win for us. And it's allowed my sons and I also to have a lot of time together just with the little, the little trio that we are. I mean, yeah. I, I was single for so many years that we definitely have a closeness that, um, is, is, I think it's a little bit more unique maybe because in light of the circumstances, because mm -hmm. it was just the three of us. And even when I was, you know, dating, I always kept that part of my life very separate from them. And I never involved them in it mm -hmm. until it was, you know, someone that I really thought was going to be around for, for a long time. So that, that must yeah. have been, uh, that sounds interesting. That must have been, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. to, you know, dating, um, yeah, to keep that separate and to to put put time to do that. That takes some time. I mean, it takes some time to to you know, it must have taken some time to find your current husband. Husband. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, I think there's there's a lot of elements to the lifestyle that I've lived that make some of it easier. You know, that that in a lot of um, divorces wouldn't work depending on the custody situation and where the other partner lives and. Um, you know, for us, because their dad is a chiropractor, in, you know, we're still both in the same community. Um, we have, you know, when I got back, when we divorced, I was not in the practice at that time. I was home with the boys. And so, you know, it was easy for me. I just built, you know, my office hours around their dad's hours. So it was opposite. And so uh, right away, we had both of us, one of us was always with the kids. And there were some challenges with that. I mean, we actually stayed business partners for a few years mm -hmm. after we divorced because it, it just made the most sense. But um, yeah, we were able to structure our lives like that. And actually to this day, they have the same, the same schedule that they had then. And it just has really worked for us. I mean, we're in a community where our practices are a block away and our houses are 10 minutes away. And, um, yeah, it, it they didn't have to change schools. They didn't have to change, uh, you know, the, my, the hockey club that my son plays with, none of that had to change. And because of our, our relationship and the the custody schedule, I guess that we have, I had, I have time, you know, throughout the week when my sons aren't with me. So that's when I would, you know, if I wanted to have, go on a date with someone, it was, this is my option and I'm not going to, they were, they were always a priority. Right. right, and, right. and for the first six, seven months when I uh, started my life again, that, you know, dating was not even on the, on the map. It was yeah. like, I don't even want to think about this. I just want to get myself resettled, you know, and I was in a new home environment and then I restarted the practice and the focus was on rebuilding our life and it wasn't on, oh, I got to find myself a husband. Right. And I, I really actually didn't even want, um, to be in a new relationship for quite some time because I had just, you know, just been in a, in a relationship that as good as it was, it left me with some, um, some voids that I wanted to sort of figure some things out on my own first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, um, it's really an, it's commendable that you you were able to create such a great relationship and bond with your sons because they were they were really young when when yeah they were yeah. but I think it you know in any situation I always go back to you know I just said this to a mom this morning in practice is you know what your kids need is love the mm. kids if, if kids are misbehaving it always comes for me it always comes back to where's the hurt here mm -hmm. because I don't believe kids are the majority of kids are trying to be manipulative or you know, they're trying to, they're trying to communicate in whatever way they can that they need something that they have a need that's not being met. So if your child is dealing with issues with his new sibling, because now they're getting less time with mom, well, then that's, they're, they're hurt and they're sad about that. It's not that they're trying to cause problems. They're reacting to something. It's what's, where's the cause of what's this behavior coming from? And I think that's for all of us, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we can easily look at a situation and if we feel offended or we feel sad, we think, well, where is this really coming from? What's the real underlying issue here? Mm -hmm. So I think all kids are just looking for that. And our, our boys know that they're loved. And yeah. even, even now, you know, when we have challenges with, with my sons, if things that come up, um, you know, there's the, there's the dynamic of, well, this happens at mom's house, this happens at dad's house. And he said this, and I said that. And, and, you know, they play us sometimes against each other. Um, but we're pretty quick to catch them. And we're very quick to correct them and make sure that they know, like, you're not going to put anything past us because if, if you tell me something that your dad said, I'm going to call him and ask him, you know, <laughs> like it's that kind of relationship. Like, right. don't try to play me and just reminding them like, look, you know, your dad might've said that, but I really know how much he loves you and he just communicated it differently. So it's just trying to, I, so I think that's what's, that's what's helped us the most is remembering that kids just really want your love and attention more than mm -hmm. they want any 
fancy things or, um, or stuff. They just really want your time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's really great because it's really boils down to love. And, you know, I was thinking, what could you say to young women who, you know, because I actually don't know what the, what the divorce rate is in Canada, but it's, I'm assuming that it's, you know, relationships, a lot of relationships, um, go through some difficulties and everything. And it really does boil down to love and, and what does the child need in that moment? Why are they upset? So that's really, really good advice. And it's so simple too. You know, it's just, we don't think that in, in any given moment of drama and crisis, you know, but, um, because we're all wrapped up in our own, uh, emotions as well yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) you know like as a mom you know it's just kind of like it's it's sometimes difficult to keep our heads um or our hearts not engaged on on that emotional level because you know our kids uh they they trigger us too you know but um you know so that so I'm thinking what can you that so I mean you basically said it you know just the advice to young young mothers who are going through some difficulties in the relationship because you know when you have kids it puts a lot of strain on on the relationship with the you know with your partner and um you know unfortunately some marriages end and some relationships end and i think that that um just to remember to, to you know i mean it, you can you, you can repeat it i mean it's just simple what's the simple advice for those women who where they're having a hard time with the children and, and cause we, we all want the best for them. Yeah. I think that it's, um, you know, th- those early child, ch- you know, years of parenting, uh, are hard in relationships. Definitely. And I joke with my husband now, I'm like, I don't know, like if we had children together, you know, would it have been any different? I don't know. Um, I'd like to think that there's a different relationship there, but I don't know. There's the, the demands on your time are, are different. So the amount of couple time you can get. I think you still have to make an effort though, like any relationship to, you got to put the time in, right? You got to try to make it work. And I don't think my relationship, my first marriage ended because we didn't try to make time for each other. There was a lot of other reasons, you know, as, as, how, as how we evolved as, as people that we you know we're changing, but I think that you've got to definitely allow for both parents to make time, like we said earlier, for self-care. So that means not only does mom get time to do her thing, dad gets time also Mm -hmm. to go and do what he wants to do. You know, and I I have a lot of empathy for a lot of the men that I see and and I know because they, you know, they're going to work all day and the moms are home with the kids and then, you know, the dad comes home and he's been doing his own work all day and in a different way and then comes home and wants to be present with the kids but also – wants a break because, you know, he wants to maybe do something that doesn't involve any other responsibility. And we all have those times when we want no one to need us, right? Yeah. No child, no work, no demands. And so honoring and respecting that each of us as parents need that kind of time, I think is really crucial because it'll help, you know, again, if we're healthier as women, we're going to be able to give more to our partners. It's the same goes for the men. If they're given time to be themselves and remember who they are, they can bring more into the family relationship as well. I also think it's important as as moms to not only be taking care of yourselves because it gives you so much back, but to to, to continue to nurture yourself because there's going to come a time when your children are not going to be your sole existence, right? They're going to be <laughs> moving on with their life. And it can be really difficult for some women who don't have any sense of self or any sense of contribution or anything that gives them joy and happiness, whether it's hobbies and stuff, to to then have all of a sudden all this free time and not know what to do with themselves. And they can suffer with different anxieties and depressions because they're all of a sudden like, that was my purpose. My purpose was this. And now my purpose has grown up and where am I left? And, you know, when your kids start to get older and I'm starting to see glimpses of it now with my 15 year old thinking, wow, there's only, you know, a few more years before if he decides to, to move out or go to college or university or whatever he decides to do, where there's going to be a huge void in my life. I already feel it now when they're away for a couple of days. So I think it's important that we all take care of ourselves that way so that we remember who we are as human beings outside of the roles we play as parents. I love that. (laughs) That Not always easy. Like when your kids are young and, you know, there's a lot of demands on your time, but you've just got to do, you know, even a small little amount is going to be better than nothing. You know, when my kids were small, I wasn't in the practice, but I would go, I'd have my three hours a week where I would go to a cafe and do some of the marketing or do some of the writing or do some things that made me feel like I was still contributing and using my brain in a way that didn't involve what's for dinner tonight. And you know, what do you need? 
And it kept me engaged and it kept my mind alive and it kept that spark in me and the, the work I love to do, it kept it alive. So mm. little things like that. Yeah, that was important to you and that's what you love to do and that fueled you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Well, Melissa, this was really awesome. I mean, you've had so many words of encouragement and wisdom and I really love your positivity and uh, it's really inspiring and I, I just really love knowing you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm glad to have gotten to know you too. I think the, uh, you know, social media is a wonderful thing as long as you can use it. <laughs> you can teach our children to use it safely. Um, I think it allows us in, in all these different mediums of podcasts and audio and videos, it, it allows us to communicate and connect with people. Yeah, that's totally true. Just in moderation. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, thank you for having these conversations and giving women the opportunity to talk about motherhood and in, in a real way that, you know, we don't always get to do um, in other circumstances. So I think it's great. Awesome. Thank you so much, Melissa. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you'd like to reach out to Dr. Melissa Longo, you can check out her website, drmelissa.ca. That's D-R-M-E-L-I-S-S-A dot C-A. Also, if you'd like to hear her podcast, you can listen to her Everyday Rockstar Moms podcast. Or if you're a chiropractor mom too, check out Rockstar Dr. Moms both on iTunes. I hope you like this episode and be sure to subscribe and write a review. Every week is a new episode with interesting everyday conversations about pregnancy and motherhood or topics that we all share as women. Also, if you'd like to be on my podcast, please check out my website, yourdoinggreatmom.com and send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Any topic about pregnancy, birth, motherhood, parenting, and everything in between is what we want to hear. I'm Marianne Shiozawa. Thanks for listening. See you next week.